Your husband has Alzheimer's disease. At first, these shocking words uttered by the doctor didn't sink in. How could Gord, my husband, 64 years young, a university professor who exercised his brain daily, possibly have Alzheimer's disease? We left the doctor's office that day with a prescription and instructions to return in a month. Over the next couple of weeks, reality began to sink in. My husband, the father of our two children, Annie and Emily, who were just nine and 14 at the time, had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I felt overwhelmed by the enormity of it all. We both did. What happens next? How will we manage? What is this disease about? I knew I needed help, so I turned to the Alzheimer's Society London and Middlesex. I took a deep breath, picked up the phone, and made the call. As I tried to get my story out amid heaving sobs, I was met with such empathy on the other end. Betty was the voice of compassion and understood my need, our needs, immediately. Betty connected me with a social worker. I shared our family story with her. She let me cry, be angry, scared, and sad, and that made me feel safe. She validated my feelings, and more importantly, she connected Gord and me with the first Link Learning series. Gord met with others like him, who were in the early stages of the disease, and I met with other caregivers as we learned about the disease. It was reassuring to be with others in a supportive environment and to know that we were not alone. I absorbed the information and pursued every opportunity to learn more. For me, knowledge truly was power. The power to understand the disease, how it will manifest, and most importantly, provide me with coping skills. As the disease progressed, so did the learning opportunities. The first link learning series run by the Alzheimer's Society is geared to the various stages of the disease. It's available when you need it and in digestible amounts. I was able to absorb without being overwhelmed. I learned what to expect, at least the best one can. Let me share with you an intimate family story. Our family was on a trip to New York City and we were in FAO Schwartz, the big toy store. Emily and Annie were exploring and Gord picked up a doll and turned to me and said, I think my wife might like this, but I'm not sure. I replied, I think your wife would love it. He said with some amazement, you know my wife? I replied, yes, very well, and I think she will love it. He smiled and put the doll back and the very next breath said, let's find Annie and Emily. I need some coffee. In and out and back in my world in a matter of minutes. I didn't freak because I had learned from the Alzheimer's Society that no matter how hard I try, I cannot pull Gord into my world. So I must try as hard as I can to enter his. I was able to go there because I had learned the skills. The social workers at the Alzheimer's Society are a key part of this learning, providing the guidance that helped me develop coping skills, which I credit to keeping me from going completely off the rails. I think many people have no idea how difficult and emotionally draining it is to care for someone with Alzheimer's. The staff and volunteers at the Alzheimer's Society totally get it. The Alzheimer's Society recognizes that caregivers can feel isolated, so they run drop-in groups for people caring for someone with dementia. I'm in a group that meets once a month and we come together to talk, cry, be angry, be sad, and laugh. We know that everyone around the table gets it. We can speak without fear of judgment and we are guided by a social worker who helps us unpack our feelings and understand the point of view of the person living with dementia. They walk us through the tough decisions, like deciding when to seek more help or when it's time to move to long-term care, helping all of us navigate the very difficult journey that is Alzheimer's disease. The supports I have received from the Alzheimer's Society have empowered me to become an advocate, giving me the strength and confidence to share our story publicly. Saturday, May 7th is the Walk for Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Society's largest and most important fundraiser. In London and Middlesex, there are many families like mine living with dementia, and like my family, they walk to support the society and the clients they serve. I, along with my daughters, Annie and Emily, and my husband, Gord, look forward to seeing you there. Who are you walking for?